Theodore deserted by its people, devastated by a second, bigger flood. The coal, cattle and cotton community is a ghost town. When the river peaked at 14.7 metres two days ago, the only people who saw it were police, who stayed behind to protect abandoned homes. You know the people and you know uh, their, the homes you've been inside and you know what devastation's going to be there. Battling brown snakes and rising water, Sergeant Mark Balin and his team spent New Year's Eve moving cars to higher ground. They broke into a business or two to save stock. He said, I don't care what you do, Mark. He said, just get in there, get the computer out, because that's all we've got left. The damage is catastrophic. 148 out of 240 homes has had water through them. Theodore's 20 businesses were all inundated. The uh, hospital just slapped the floor and, and sadly our doctor, uh, his surgery, he's uh, had approximately 1.2 metres through the doctor's surgery. It's 300 residents, Queensland's first to be evacuated, are staying at Nowra. In the mining camp's mess hall, we showed them what they've been waiting to see. That's Shawnee's, there's a chiller right there. Oh, it is too, that's back Shawnee's. Oh. The lives they left behind. Stressed out since I left. All we want to do now is get home and have a look. And see what the damage is and uh, start the big clean up. I think it's pretty bad and mine was gone in the first, the first one that comes through. And yeah, so I'll have nothing left. No one knows when they'll be allowed back. But when the water goes down, where do 148 families live? Theodore isn't just any community. Residents own the pub, the retirement village, and when the Royal Flying Doctors refuse to land here at night, they raise $60,000 to light the runway. Until residents return, their town is in good hands. In Theodore, Erin Edwards, 7 News.